Hey, what's up everybody? Terry White here and it's June. So you know what that means? There are some Lightroom updates. That means Lightroom across the board, Lightroom ecosystem. So whether you're on a Lightroom Classic, Lightroom Desktop, Lightroom Web, Lightroom on mobile, iPhone and Android and iPad, there's something new for you. Now, every platform, every Surface doesn't get every update, but I'll point them out as I can across the board. And mostly for the desktop releases, uh, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop, the things I'm gonna show you up front are in both. So I'm not gonna show you every single feature in both because that's a waste of time, but just know that if I mention a feature, if I don't say it specifically for a specific surface, then it is across the board. All right, so let's dive into one of the biggest ones. It's one of the ones you've been asking for the most, and let's dive into AI Denoise. So I've got a pretty noisy photo here, as you can see, and I wanna apply AI Denoise to this. Now in the past, that would mean going into the develop module, finding the feature, using it, and it would create a brand new DNG that has been denoised. And the results are usually really good. The problem is it creates a brand new file. And if I wanna make changes to it, then I gotta go do it again from the original and create another brand new file. And it just becomes a file management thing if you if you work on it more than a couple of times. So let's head up to the develop module with this photo. And you'll now notice under the detailed tab, there's denoise. First of all, it's easier to find. Second of all, there's no modal dialog. I just click it and it applies it to my photo. I don't get a new photo. I don't get a new DNG. If I wanna make changes to it after the fact, I can change it to my heart's content. I can come in and turn it off. And I have now denoised this photo with a simple checkbox, like all my other Lightroom adjustments. No more new DNGs, no more uh, it having to create a separate file and you have to keep doing it every time you wanna make a change. It has now happened across the board. Now that's happened to denoise, but it's also happened to one of my other, other favorite features, which is uh, the, the, the super resolution. So let's look at this photo of my aunt and you can tell it's a low res, it's 815 by 774. So I could double the size of that photo by simply going in and choosing super resolution. But in the past, that would make a DNG, a separate new file that was twice the size. So now I don't have to do that anymore. I just click the box. It's done. It's now a, here, let's go look. It's now twice the size, just like that. So if I export this one out, I now get one that was twice as big as the original. And if I ever wanna uncheck it, I can. This is awesome for people that love doing this kind of work. And just to prove the point, I said I wouldn't do this, but I'm gonna go do it. If I head over to uh, Lightroom desktop where I've got the same albums, I switch to detail and I scroll up and find detail. There's my denoise, there's my super resolution, the same checkboxes here in Lightroom desktop as well. I'm not gonna take the time to run them, I'm just pointing out that they're there. All right, so now let's pop back over to Lightroom Classic. In the Lightroom Classic, I'm gonna take you to my next favorite thing. And my next favorite thing is, I love, 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 if you follow my videos, people distractions. I love getting rid of distractions in my photos. So here I am in Iceland taking this beautiful photo of the waterfall. I should have done a long exposure, but I didn't want to bother because there were so many people in the way. And I just, you know, sacrificed the photo just because I just didn't feel like it. But now that I would be able to get rid of the people, I should go back and take this photo the right way. But anyway, let's head over to the develop module one more time. And let's go into the remove tool. And you'll notice in the remove tool now, there is a brand new people distraction and reflection distraction removal. So if I twirl down people, it will go and put an overlay over what it thinks are the distracting people. You can always click to remove them. If you say, no, this person should be there, that's the subject, you can remove that and it will keep that person. But now I can just go ahead and click remove and let Lightroom do its thing. Again, not creating a new file, it's doing it to this one, non-destructively, and my people distractions are gone, just like that. So that, by the way, is not only in Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop, the people removal is, a, or distraction removal is across the board. So it's in Lightroom Web, it's in Lightroom uh, Mobile, it's in Lightroom on iPad, it's across the board. So whatever surface you like using Lightroom on, you'll enjoy this feature. 
All right, so let's pop out of this and let's talk about reflection removal. Now, again, I can do this in Lightroom Classic, but I'm gonna pop over to Lightroom Desktop just to give the Lightroom Desktop user some love as well. And we'll pop over into this photo where I took this in New York City and I was just passing by a window and I said, hey, this will be a cool shot to show the reflection removal with. I took this on purpose. So I'm gonna go into the remove and same thing, people and reflections. I'm gonna twirl down reflections. And just before I hit apply, I just wanna point out that you do have a preview standard and best mode to pick from. So if you're like experimenting, maybe you just wanna apply preview because it'll be faster to see what you get before you uh, spend the time to let it process on best. So I'll give it a few seconds to process on best and let it do its thing. It's, it's moving along pretty quickly. And wow, just like magic. So you might be saying, well, Terry, I don't remember what that used to look like. There's before, there's after. And well, why is there a slider? Because maybe you want to pull back in some of the reflection. You could control over that. And of course, bringing it down to zero or near zero is going to show you what you had before. Then why does it go to the other side? Because maybe you want to see the actual reflected image without the window. So removing reflections just got a whole lot better. Now this was first tech previewed in Camera Raw back in February. And the first thing people ask, when am I gonna get this in Lightroom? Well, now you've got it in Lightroom Classic and you've got it in Lightroom Desktop. So quickly, easily removing window or just reflections in general. People always ask, does it work with, with glasses? You have to try. It's not designed to work with glasses, but try it, give it a shot. And of course the team's gonna keep working on this because we hear glasses quite a bit. All right, so there you have it. Uh, those are the top things in Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop that are across the board. Let me switch back to Lightroom Classic to talk about a couple specific classic features. Uh, number one, and this is big, I don't have a Fuji camera. I'm a, I'm a Nikon shooter, but if you're a Fuji shooter, you just got tether support for the first time in Lightroom Classic. That means you can connect a USB uh, cable to your uh, Fuji camera, if it's a supported model, and be able to shoot directly into Lightroom Classic, just like we do in Nikon, Canon, Sony, and now Fuji. Speaking of Canon, Canon's SDK just gave us three new cameras for tether support. I don't remember what the models are, but you'll check the description. Uh, those will uh, also be supported for tethering now. Uh, duplicate detection improvements. So when you're bringing photos in, they're already in, you wanna get rid of duplicates, that's been improved. Of course, performance improvements across the board, especially in Lightroom Classic. And um, here's another just kind of a, a Lightroom Classic specific one when, you're, when your folder is moved or renamed or whatever, and you need to relink that just got a lot easier because now you can select a, a folder that, of images that need to be relinked and it will see all the images in that folder that also need to be relinked instead of you having to do them one by one. So some other things, 10 new cameras supported across the board, 25 new lenses supported across the board, bug fixes and performance improvements across the board. And for Lightroom iPhone specifically, there is a new creative assistant that I made a separate video for. So I'll put the link to that in the description as well so you can check that out. So with that said, cheers everyone. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Go update all your Lightrooms today. Thanks everybody.